Hello, today I have for you an interesting story of mobile CSRF on the Periscope app that was rewarded twice. Let's start with a quick reminder of what is the CSRF vulnerability. The cross-site request forgery usually occurs when the victim is logged into the vulnerable site and in the same browser opens the attacker's web page. And on the attacker's website, there is for example an HTML form that gets auto-submitted to the vulnerable site and the victim browser automatically attaches their cookies to the site. Then the request is performed on behalf of the victim and makes an action that benefits the attacker some way. But how does this attack work on the mobile applications? It works by abusing DeepLink which is a custom URL scheme defined by the application. Some applications only used a custom URL schemes to open the app, but it is possible to have a parameters in the address and the application may automatically perform an action after clicking the link. So if you're browsing the web using the mobile browser and all of a sudden some applications want to be run, it means that deep link was used here. In this case of Periscope app, it was possible to follow user using a deep link. But after clicking such link, there was no confirmation in the application and it made it vulnerable to the CSRF attack. So an attacker could prepare such address with his user ID and embed this URL on his website and every time someone would visit his website, he would auto-submit this link and he would be followed by a lot of people immediately. So it might seem like a not a very serious bug, especially that after opening the Periscope app, the currently followed user would be visible on the screen, which would make it very easy to immediately unfollow. But from the previous reports, we see that Twitter is a company that cares a lot about such issues. So this is the first report. It was rewarded $1,500 in June 2019 and it was publicly disclosed in February 2020. So after the disclosure of the bug reported on the Android platform, another hunter tried to reproduce the same issue in the iOS application. And strangely enough, he was successful. So he has filed a report in which he only references the Android issue and one more thing he has done is he has prepared a proof of concept using a QR code. And what's even more surprising is the fact that he was rewarded almost $3,000, which is almost twice as much as the original report. It is very strange. First, when you have a mobile bug on one platform, it usually has an equivalent on the another platform. Usually you would assume that after filing a report, they will verify whether the second platform is vulnerable or not, or at least ask you to do this. How is it possible that they have forgotten about the other platform? My guess would be that fixing vulnerability for Twitter is a highly automated process. Maybe they have a Jira instance paired with HackerOne and the tickets are created automatically. And when there is a vulnerability that affects Android, it goes to the team responsible for fixing Android vulnerabilities and not to the iOS team. However, the amount of the bounties paid remains a mystery to me as I don't think that the QR code proof of concept was worth doubling up the 1500 bounty. The first reported asked for explanation of this amount of bounty. The Twitter team hasn't responded yet, it's been three weeks. If they ever will, I will put their explanation in the comment section down below. For us, the takeaway here is, when reporting a mobile application bug, it is always good to ask a question about the second platform. Maybe the team will want us to validate the vulnerability on the second platform. That's it for today's video. I'm very interested in your stories about submitting a reports affecting the mobile applications. Leave them down below in the comment section. If you've enjoyed the video, leave a like and a subscription and thank you.